What's up guys? I think in this video, I'm gonna inadvertently show you why I like Amazon merch so much. I'm gonna show you the honest truth of how a lot of people succeed at print on demand by breaking the rules. Yes, you probably could have guessed uh, the thumbnail and the title of this video kind of implied that we were gonna go down one of these rabbit holes. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, some of these products that I'm gonna be showing you that are best selling, yet the people capitalizing and gaining from them likely don't have the um, intellectual property rights to be selling the designs. So let's get to it. If you've ever done product research before on Amazon or Etsy, I'm sure you've seen designs like this one where you've got a celebrity just having their image used in the design and you, I mean, I don't know about you, but I breeze right past these because I'm like, okay, I'm not going to risk my seller account to sell something like this when I don't have the rights to use, you know, in this case, a picture of Nicolas Cage, right? But people who say, oh, I don't care, whatever, it's worth it, um, they're rewarded in a big way. Check this out. This mug is selling for $17 and it's got over 2,200 reviews. So they have sold an incredible number of these mugs and... I mean, I don't know what to say. This is honestly how a lot of print-on-demand sellers achieve success. It's not through doing it the right way. It's just through taking shortcuts, and it's a means to an end because this won't last forever unless maybe it's Nicolas Cage himself selling under the brand SCSF. You know what I mean? I highly doubt it, uh, but I just wanted to do a short video and just kind of um, keep it real. You know what I mean? Really, as the title implies about how, and I'm not, I'm not trying to suggest anybody do this. I'm telling you firsthand, I don't do it. I keep that long-term time horizon. I'd rather make less money longer than make more money over a short duration and be right back to square zero uh, after my account gets shut down whenever it happens. You know what I mean? Stuff like this. And by the way, I should mention, this is like an Amazon seller central listing. So is this one. Wait, no, this is an Etsy one. Sorry. Either way, I just wanted to mention that like Amazon Seller Central doesn't have the same like approval rejection algorithm that uh, Amazon Merch has, right? That's why I like Amazon Merch because yeah, there are people who try to game the system, but you're playing with fire. It's already hard enough to get into Amazon Merch. You really don't want to mess around um, with something like this that would for sure get rejected. So Amazon Seller Central, they don't do that, right? They just let you know, kind of the market police things. They, they, they do censor some words. It's rare that they do. And when they do, you're like, damn, that must be uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I won't go to, don't want to say, cause typically those words that they'll censor are also like YouTube censored. So let's just skip through. Uh, next one, like changing the Dunkin' Donuts logo, right? Now, now this, I'm not as sure. Like I don't think if Dunkin' Donuts took you to court that you would win, right? Because this is so similar to their logo. Um, that being said, like I'm sure you'd probably be, by the way, I don't even know why I'm going down this rabbit hole. I wouldn't sell this, right? I wouldn't sell the, Dun the Dunkin' Donuts logo or, you know, a play on the McDonald's logo. Um, when I had my first Etsy shop shut down, I don't mind sharing this. Like, I was on the receiving end of a bunch of reports, but it was like, a lot of them were just simple hats, like text-based hat designs. It was during, you know, Trump being president. Everybody was selling the make something great again, where you could just switch something with whatever. A lot of people on Etsy were just reporting each other because it would get your competition removed. You'd soak up more market share by doing that. It actually worked. Um, I'm not advising anybody to do that either. I'm just keeping it real. One time I did actually deserve to be taken down. It was because I used the North Face logo, but I said the North remembers. Now guys, we all go through the learning curve. I'm not infallible. I make mistakes just like everybody else. It was the first and last time I ever did something like that though. So instead of the North Face, it said the North remembers. The joke is when I got mine removed, there was still like a hundred of them up on Etsy. So. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Either way, I don't recommend it. It's like when you learn, let that be your learning experience. Evolve your process. I'm trying to fast forward you from having to face those learning experiences so that you don't have to deal with the consequences, whether it's using a celebrity. I'm not doing that. Uh, making a tweak on a logo. You know what I mean? These sort of things on Amazon Merch would instantly get rejected. My advice is that if you know it would get rejected on Amazon Merch, don't risk your Seller Central account. Don't risk your Etsy account selling it. Uh, here's one, the Bed Bath & Beyond. Isn't that what that is? I think so. <laughs> bed Bath. I feel like we've seen this on Amazon Merch before. Um, is it not Bed? No, Bath & Body Works. I'm an idiot. <laughs> you guys can fry me in the comments. Bath & Body Works? Isn't that what it's called? This thing? Yeah. 
anyways, you can tell I don't get out much. I don't do much shopping. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm at my computer all day. Um, anyways, though, like making a tweak on another logo, like, you know, I'm, I don't think it's worth risking if you have to face the consequences of being on the receiving end of a report. The whole thing I was trying to say a second ago, though, is that Seller Central, Etsy, uh, Redbubble, like they don't have that automated detection in place to just insta reject you the way that merch does. Some interesting things I've seen recently. Let me know where you guys stand on this. I know I'm a talking head on a screen and I'm supposed to know everything, but like, I don't know really how this is supposed to work. Like there's weird rules in the United States where it's like, I'm pretty sure elected officials, like a president, you know, Joe Biden, Trump, whoever, we can make money off their likeness. Serial killers, I don't know. Like, do they relinquish some of those rights because they're, you know, in prison? I, I don't know. Right. Like with celebrities, I'm, pretty, you know, I'm like 99 percent sure we can't just go do the Nicolas Cage thing. But there are people making decent sales on Etsy right now. And it's probably because, you know, I don't know if you guys watch like Netflix or any of the uh, Hulu. But the serial killer shows are really um, gaining a lot of popularity, which is kind of good, kind of bad. I don't know. I just watched one called Blackbird on Apple TV, by the way. I would highly recommend that one. It wasn't like glorifying the killer the way that um, Dahmer did, I would say, if you've seen them. Uh, but anyways, these are selling really well. I personally won't be selling them, but it's like once you achieve a certain level of success, like, is it worth it? I don't know. Sorry for interrupting. I wanted to let you know that linked in the description, you can find my free print on demand mini course that is completely new for 2023. If you sign up, it'll help you get your first sale. And down there, you'll find a link to my print on demand Facebook group. I hope you'll join the community. You've got Bob Ross. I know when I was in elementary school, we used to always see him on TV before the morning announcements. That's what I remember him as, the painter. Um, and I, I was thinking like, well, when did Bob Ross die? Is this something we'd be able to use after uh, the... I, I forget what... <laughs> guys, I, I wish I was like more of an expert, but it's hard to even pretend. Uh, copyright lasts 70 years after death. So would that imply his like paintings? Or would that imply like his likeness you know what i mean pictures of him either way he died in 1995 i looked it up uh that's not 70 years ago so um yeah i, I don't think you should be allowed to sell bob ross but look at this this mug has 7278 reviews yes i said that 7200 7278 that is absurd at 1995 absolutely crazy uh, this is that one guy who's like an internet meme. I actually did an interview with somebody like a couple years back who had a whole brand dedicated to profiting off of this guy who's an internet meme. Um, if you know who he is, you know who he is, I guess. But either way, like, yeah, I mean, 54 reviews. And I'm pretty sure when I had that that interview with that guy, I published it on my channel. It was probably in 2020, maybe before. Um, he basically said that like he had to pay this dude's like family to get the rights to use it. But he was already making money off of it prior to to then but then his store got so big that he basically had to do something so he paid he basically would just like pay the family off um anyways just another example uh, i already plugged my mini course in my print on demand facebook group but check those out uh and then of course guys you know we couldn't have this video be complete without just going to etsy and typing in marvel shirt right and just looking at the most blatant infringing that you could possibly do uh assuming i mean i don't know I'm assuming that they don't have the rights to sell the Marvel stuff. It is possible that they pay an extravagant amount of money. But when you start looking at the number of reviews on these shops, right? If you look at the one behind me here too, only 288. Um, I think a lot of these people are just restarting Etsy shops over and over again. Because, I mean, look at the reviews on the shop. 12, 288, 4,600, okay. And then the one behind me, 288 like that's not a lot of reviews on a shop makes me think that like they're just infringing and then when they lose their shop they're like oh well it was good while it lasted they set it to daily payouts and they get as much money as they can while they can another example you know i was just like hey why not i typed in nfl shirt and you don't see as much infringing directly on a team maybe etsy tweaked their algorithm so that it's not like easy to just say oh i'm gonna sell dallas cowboys right <laughs> like because we've actually seen shops like that that did that. You know what I mean? New sellers just throw up every NFL logo, make hundreds of sales in like a week, and then get their shop removed. And by the way, I'm not trying to, please, don't don't take this as a sign to go do that. It's not worth it. Um, and you could actually face real legal ramifications. Don't don't overlook that aspect. But like, they're just going after the NFL players. They're just putting the, um, the NFL players 
uh, on shirts, which definitely is infringing on their likeness. Um, and then also, you know, even that in that number one spot there, Justin Jefferson, remember in the top five niches of the week uh, from Sunday, we had the gritty, the leprechauns doing the gritty. Well, there you go. Justin Jefferson, that's his dance. He made it popular as far as I know. Uh, and, and then guys, the video wouldn't be complete. You knew we had to do it <laughs> going to Etsy and just typing in Disney. And there are, this is my favorite part. You type in Disney on Etsy. What percentage of the 3,500, sorry, 300. 54,000, I woke up early today, had to get my taxes done, 354,000 results on Disney, what percentage of them do you think actually have the rights to sell Disney products? I'm sure somebody does, but I'll bet you anything it's not that many, all right? Um, this is just, I want to do this video just to like shed light. It's not to discourage anybody. It's just to show that, hey, you know, sometimes like there are people that kill it with print on demand, but they're taking shortcuts and that's not a real business, right? It's just a, a short-term cash grab. It is what it, it is. What it is. Um, I would challenge you guys to build a real business over the long time horizon, do it right. Don't risk everything. And you know, that's, that's what I would highly recommend doing. All right. Uh, if you guys are interested, by the way, I have a full print on demand course, walks you through how I monetize my entire print on demand efforts, squeeze as much money out of every researched design that I create. You can find a link in the description if you want to learn more and I have a private community. I go live every Wednesday and Friday. If you want to join, um, check that out. It's 40% off using the link in the description. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video.